ever open up your marketing dashboards and just feel like completely lost? Totally. Yeah, like drowning in numbers, spreadsheets for days. Mm. Today, we're going deep on something that might sound kind of boring. Okay. <laughs> but it's huge EE for actually making sense of all that data. Right. We're talking how to name your marketing campaigns. Okay. And no, not like coming up with the next just do it. Right. This is about the behind the scenes names, the nitty gritty stuff that makes your data make sense no matter how big your business gets. I see. You might be thinking names, really, isn't that just like semantics? Yeah, I could see that. But trust me, whether you're in spreadsheets daily or just curious about how this whole marketing machine works, this deep dive is gonna be eye-opening. Okay, yeah. We're talking less time wrestling with data more time actually using it to make smart decisions. I love that. And to help us crack the code, we've got our marketing data whiz, expert speaker. Happy to be here. So we've been digging into this piece called Panos, and it's got some really smart stuff about good campaign names versus, you know, the forgettable ones. I'm listening. What really struck me was this idea that a good naming system isn't just about being organized. It's like future-proofing your decision-making. Oh, yeah, Like fair. building a house, you need that strong foundation. Right, right. And in marketing, that foundation is a clear, consistent way you name your campaigns. Yeah, makes sense. It's like, if you're looking at campaign data six months from now, are you gonna remember what campaign A even was? Probably not. No way. And that's where Panos is so helpful, it's all about clarity. Okay. Your campaign names need to instantly tell you what they're about, who they're targeting, the whole thing. Makes sense. It's funny because Panos actually gives this example. Google Ads Search, April 2024, new product launch. It's a mouthful, I know, but sure. it tells you everything, right? It does, yeah. Platform, the channel, the date, the goal, boom, it's all right there. Exactly. Like, why didn't I think of this before? It's like that, right? Totally. And this level of detail might seem like overkill at first, but Panos argues it's what lets you make those really impactful decisions down the line. Interesting. So it's about the long game. Exactly. And speaking of impact, Panos also talks about how important this is for analyzing data and finding places to improve. Oh, okay. Tell me more about that. Yeah, it's about being able to look at your campaigns and instantly see what's working, what's not. Like having X revision for your marketing? I love it. Exactly. But Panos doesn't just tell us what to do, right? It also warns us about what not to do. Oh, for sure. And it's kind of surprising how often these little things trip people up. Yeah. What are some of those common pitfalls? Like ad hoc naming. Mm. Sounds fancy, right? Yeah, very official. But it's a recipe for disaster, honestly. How so? Because it's like you're labeling your spice jars, you know, stuff one, stuff two. Oh. Good luck finding the oregano when you need it. A little nightmare. Right. You might think you'll remember, but a few months down the line. It's anyone's guess. Exactly. And then on top of that, there's inconsistency, right? Hmm. Like using different naming styles for different campaigns. Ooh, yeah, don't even get me started. Ugh, headed. It's like you're trying to follow a recipe, but the measurements are all over the place. Cups, tablespoons, pinches. Exactly. <laughs> it's a recipe for disaster. Speaking of disasters, Panos also talks about changing campaign names after they've launched. I'm stressed just thinking about it. Yeah, it's not great. Why is that so bad? Because it's like trying to rewrite history, you know? Yeah. Your date is connected to that original name, so any changes just create chaos. Oh, so it's messing mm. up all your historical data. Exactly. Okay, this next one actually made me laugh out loud when I read it. Mm. Panos gives this example of an overly complicated name, and I'm just going to read it here. Ready? Hit me. 2024 Spring Sale Online Advertising Campaign for New Customers in NYC. Oh my gosh. Like, come on. Yeah, that's a bit much. It's the whole kitchen Andy the sink. Right. You're trying to fit everything into one name. It's overwhelming. It is. And it highlights this tendency to be so comprehensive that you forget to be clear and concise. Yeah, it's got to be catchy. Exactly. A good campaign. It's like a tagline. Memorable to the point. <laughs> so we've talked about what to do, what not to do. For our listeners who are ready to like level up their marketing game what's the big takeaway here don't underestimate the power of a good name you know it might seem like a small detail but it can make a huge e difference in actually understanding your data and making good decisions working smarter not harder as they say <laughs> it's all about having that system in place right so you're not just spinning your wheels yes having a system and this is important not being afraid to revisit it oh interesting tell me more about that well think about it marketing is always changing right Oh, for sure. What worked last year might not work today. 
Right. Your audience changes, you try new things, your whole understanding of your product or service, it evolves. So our naming conventions, yeah. they need to be able to keep up with all that. Exactly. Right. Regularly going back, tweaking things to match your current strategy. That's how you keep your data useful. Exactly. Wow, I never thought I'd be this passionate about naming conventions. I know, right? But it really is key. It is. It's like, who knew a few well-placed underscores could make such a difference? It's the little things. So to wrap things up for our listeners, what are the key things to remember when it comes to naming your campaigns like a pro? Keep it clear, keep it consistent, and be ready to adapt. I love it. Make sure your names tell you everything you need to know without being overly complicated. Right. We don't want another 2024 spring sale situation. Exactly. And remember, as your business changes, your naming conventions might need to change too. So ditch those generic labels, everyone, and embrace the power of a well-named campaign. Your future self and your data will thank you.